and welcome to the Felt Squirrel Speaks. Today is Monday, June 11th, and this is episode 16, I think, maybe? Yeah, it's totally episode 16. It is now. Hi! How are you? I hope you are all doing quite well. I am. So many of you contacted me this week, I really appreciate it. If you would like to contact me, feel free to do so. You can find me as the Fat Squirrel on both Ravelry and Plurk. Friend me up, yo. Okay. Really? Be my friend. Isn't that sad? <laughs> I always just hate to ask to people to, well, I still do. I just ask them to add me as their friend. It's like the worst moment in eighth grade ever. <sighs> Will you be my friend, please? I promise I'm not weird. Maybe a little. But you know that already, but those people don't. Really, as adults, we should not have to go through this again. Should be either like, you're my friend or not. But no, thank you, Mr. Internet. Complicate things. We could all deal with some additional blows to our self esteem. That's all I'm saying. Anyway. Rant. <laughs> so, hi. How are you? I already said that. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Um, shenanigans. Really not that many shenanigans. I know, right? We had the most boring, uneventful weekend ever. Awesome. Aren't you excited about those sometimes? My daughter and I went to the grocery store. I'm such a mom. I was like, my daughter and I. <sighs> Whatever. It's true. She's always there. No, oh, Parasitic children never go away. Oh, they live in your body and eat your fluids and steal your calcium from your bones and then they come out like steal your energy and your hope <sighs> anyway my daughter and I were at the grocery store and the lady was like oh yeah, 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 yeah exciting plans for this weekend and I was like no we don't <laughs> she looked at me like I was a little crazy but I was excited sometimes a whole hot mess of nothing is just what you want and that's just what I got and it was fabulous my husband and I till we watched some comedy on the Netflix, we laughed. Yay! That's good. That was really it. And this week, I have wee children in my house because um, I'm doing a little bit of child care additional providingness for some people. I mean, I'm not doing it for them like I'm a martyr and they're paying me. Um, but so I've had a house full of little children all day. It was actually not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. I was really dreading it. I did not sleep at all last night. <laughs> Such an anal retentive jerk. I can't help it. I really was like, it was like the first day of my new job. I just kept being like, oh God, I never, oh, it's going to be a hot mess. I'm going to mess up. It's going to be terrible. There were children crying bloody tears. It's going to be awful. It was not that bad. It was that, in fact, it was quite fine. They were fun. They did great. They had lunch and laughed about farts and burps. Yay! Five and six-year-olds are easily entertained. Go with them. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uneventful except for lots of knitting that I did, which you will see in a minute. <clears throat> I do have some thank yous. Are you ready? Here you go. Thank you to Sarah. She donated to me two of her very own patterns. Look at that. The virtual hug shawlette, which is like kind of like a meshy -y shawlette. Like a sh Yes. Oh, it says shawlette. I was like, am I saying the wrong thing? That's exactly what it says. Um, and also, this one you'll be able to see as well, sorry. The sea sprite, which again is another little love shawlette, which is very nice. I like the little, I like the border on that one. It's very nice. Oh, I enjoy a point now and again. Sometimes that's just easy to block, and I enjoy that. Yay. So isn't that nice of her? She watches the show, and she's muy talentado. That's not a word, kids. I made that up. And then, the lovely candy, Candyland, donated, or donated, gifted me the Jacobus pattern. This is by the Anita Will Shoot, is what I want to say. She is also the lovely woman who did the drawers pattern, so she does all in the round, um, no seaming. She suggests you wait to the end of stuff. Don't do that, though. Stuff as you go. 
I don't want to wait to the, that's, that's a lot of skinny stuff stuff. So anyway, that was just like my only rant. That's the only thing I would do differently with her patterns is stuff as you go. Um, and so I'm excited. Aren't they cute? Ah, I think my kid's going to be getting one of those for Christmas. I know you're all like, dude, it's June. Dude, before you know it, it will be December. The knitting takes time, as you all know. You got to get up on it. So yes. And Candyland also made a donation. Yay! Thank you very much! Um, so this week we have lots of knitting. But, mm, ooh, I'll do it right now. I was trying to decide, because somebody sent me prizes. So I was like, should I do it at the end? Like what I would do, like a, if I bought something? I didn't really buy it, but it's exciting and I want to show it to you. Yay! So, I will just do that right now. There you go. The first thing I will show you is the most plainest thing. Just because I'm like, I'm building up, people. Building up. So this is some lovely white Punta Roving by the Sheep Shed Studios. So Deb, yay, I love your face. She was like, you need a bigger fiber stash. I was like, I think I do. <laughs> so she sent me a box of fiber. I love her face. So that's the first one. And then numero dos. And that is, this is where we fruity drinks by the palm by the Spunk Eclectic Club. And it is four ounces of Merino Bamboo Viscous. I'm so excited. I've never been in a club, but I'm getting like club hand-me-downs. I will totally be your little sister. Send me your hand-me-downs. I'll take them. So, I'm just shitty. I don't know if you're going to be able to see. Uh, you really can't see it all. But it's super shiny. It glows. With the love of the Indy Dyer. Shines right through. Her love of her job just shines right through. It's like a glowing ball of joy. So I'm excited about that. I've never spun anything with that high of a viscous content. Actually, nothing at all. Why am I lying? I've never spun anything with bamboo in it. It's going to be exciting. So then... It just keeps getting better, right? <gasps> so then, I know, right? Dub's awesome. Falkland! And this is called B Mice. F L F. Really? Elf Beth. It's right there. Elf. B Mice Elf Falkland. Falkland. Isn't that cute? Isn't it pretty? I don't know. I'm beginning to love blue more as I get older. What's that about? Never gave Blue a second thought. Now I'm like, hey, Blue, what's up? Want to roll? Blue's like, sure, I'm ready to roll. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Then, this is the most exciting. Look at it. Okay, you can't see this, but you gotta go. It's very flurry. We decided the next week that we're naming my dog who is over a year old. We're not really renaming her, but I'm renaming her in my head. And sometimes when I say it out loud, even. We're renaming her Mrs. Fluffy Britches. And this could also be called Mrs. Fluffy Britches. Oh, it's so fluffy. And this is the French, oh wait, Be Mice Elf, same people, in the French Macaroon colorway, Superwash Merino. I have, do you want to hear a confession? Never spun with Merino. I'm totally scared to do it. I don't know why, but I am. But this is super wash Merino. It is so cute. Because guess what? I think I'm going to, I'm going to combine my gifts of like lovely, generous knitters of awesomeness faces. And then I'm going to knit, I'm going to spin this into something festive and then knit that monkey with it. Do you think? Does this look totally like it could be a happy monkey? And it's super wash. So if my kid wants to get snot on it, I can just throw it in the washing machine. Totally excited. Yay! So that's it. Yay! So sorry, I don't really always buy a lot of stuff because I just don't. It's not because I don't want to, because boy do I want to. But I just don't always get to. So I was so excited to get to show you something pretty. Yay! Like, dumb. I'm shuffling things around. So this week I totally have some finished objects. 
I know, two weeks without. I was like, here's my same two projects for two weeks. I almost did it again this week. And then Thursday night, something happened. And I was going crazy. So this time, I have some stuff. First of all, I'm part of Nerd Wars this year. What? What? I know, right? Crazy face. Hello, bandwagon. I would like a ride. Anywho, I'm totally on Team Stargate Command. If you don't know what Nerd Wars is, that's okay. <laughs> it's a bunch of nerdy knitters who organize themselves onto teams by things that they like in nerd world. Like there is a st Team Space Alliance for Star Trek folk, and not just Star Trek, but Battlestar Galactic, all the space TV shows. And there's like Team TARDIS, of course, for Doctor Who, the geekiest of all geeks. I totally want to be you people. I started watching Doctor Who not too long ago. I totally love it. Anyway, there's that. There's like a, like a CSIE kind of group. So there's all these different groups. And you have challenges each month. And I, the reason I joined it was because, A, I'm a nerd. Evidently, I want to go to war with other nerds. Which is kind of funny to think about. <laughs> I'm imagining like um, the brain stopped working. Braveheart. <laughs> the like big line of all the like Celtic guys with their spears and their stuff and their ah oh, and their fate, their woad and whatnot. And I'm imagining that was just like a bunch of nerds and knitwear. It's kind of funny. Anyway, <laughs> so I thought I would totally be challenged to think about my knitting in ways that I don't usually do so. Because quite frankly, my knitting process is usually like, oh, pretty, okay, knit. You know, I'm not really, not all analytical up on my knitting. But I thought, well, it'd be interesting challenge. So it is kind of fun. It is kind of fun. He's really, instead of like, I thought it was going to be more like trying to find things that fit the into the categories. Really, it's more like, what do I want to knit? How do I make it fit into the category? Which is good. Um, so it is kind of fun. It makes you, it does make you think about your knitting a little bit. Um, it's a little overwhelming though. My team is very chattery. Like really, if you don't check on the thingy, like if you forget a day, because like you have other things that happen and you just don't get to it there's like 400 messages and you're just like oh crikey so it's a little overwhelming those people are super hardcore but don't worry people if you're on my team which you're not because i don't think any of our viewers are but just in case i'm not slacking i just haven't posted everything yet so ta -da. with that said here's my first nerd worst thing you're like what the heck isn't it cute this is a heavily modified <laughs> version of the Karma Fairy by Katya Bloom, which is a free pattern. And what it is, is it's like a bunch of little, like, um, Wizard of Oz people in, like, dolly form. The very simple dolly form, like desk, like you could put on your desk kind. The lion is not one of the options, but one of the things we needed to knit was one of the people from Wizard of Oz for something else I won't even go into it because blah, blah, boring for you. Um, but I thought, oh, I don't really want to knit a witch or a Dorothy or I was like, oh, I'll knit a lion. So basically I used the same pattern, except I just crocheted on a mane and needle felt it on a face, which is wonky because then I also felted him because I was like, what am I going to do with that doohickey? Cause I don't like things sitting around. My house is not very big and there are already enough things sitting around. So I was like, what am I going to do with that doohickey that we all agreed to make together as a team? And so I decided, hey, I'm going to felt it. Look, I put a ball in there before I, before I sewed him up. I had like a little ball that my dog had torn the other part of it off of. So this is my Annie's new toy. Hopefully she doesn't chew it up in 37 seconds. Please, Annie, don't do that. But anyway, so yay. This is random yarn have no idea what it is. My mother got it for me at a random festival. It's random woolly scratchy yarn. No labels. Independent woolen mill. Couldn't tell you. But there it is. Project number one. Nerd Wars also. Project number two.
One of the things is you were supposed to knit something for a men's charity or donate to a men's charity. I didn't quite get that in my head when I read it. I thought you had to knit something. Whatever, it's fine. I knit something. I would have probably done that anyway. Washcloth. Numero uno. That one is the Devon's Dishcloth by Devon Josting. It's basically just garter stitch border with seed stitch middle. And then the next one I did was the All Washed Up Cloth by Jill Arnouche. Also free. Very easy. Ah. And then I'm donating these to the Warmth for Warriors, which is usually they do hats, but in the summer they're doing washcloths, 100% cotton. I'll put the link down there if you want to do some. So yes. Then, something crazy happened. <laughs> I am not typically a washcloth, dishcloth knitter. I always want to do knit dishcloths, um, but then I, just, I do, and then I don't like them. So, but then I was, oh, so this is with um, Hobby Lobby's I Love This Cotton. This is the Sage Ombre. Um, but then I knit, this is nice. I hate knitting with lilies, peaches, and cream, whatever that shenanigan is. I, I'll say it, don't care for it at all. Knitting you with it is a chore that I do not enjoy. This, actually kind of pleasant. It's not wool, but it's totally pleasant. That sugars, I don't even know what it's called. See, I'm bashing a yarn that I, you know what I mean though. Sugar and cream, peaches and cream, that scratchy cotton. Which is rigid and... Ugh. But this is actually kind of nice. So then I thought, hmm, that was kind of fun. Let's go crazy. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> don't know about your child. Sorry if you don't have one. Well, not sorry. Good decision. Um, but sorry you have to listen to this if you don't have one. But maybe you have a dog. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> So my kid always has this grub. Ah, really? Where does that come from? It's disgusting. And I never see it until it's time to leave the house. And then we're in a hurry. And I'm like, Ugh! and then I'm like, Burr! and I'm like, you better run upstairs and get a washcloth. And she's all like, ah! and I'm like, oh, no, get up and hurry. And then like, it's a whole thing. And I'm a parenting fail. No, I always say, yeah, but psh, extra, extra loud kind of parenting fail. So I decided that I'll make her some little tiny washcloths to keep downstairs in our sink. We always leave out the back door and it's adjacent to the kitchen. So I just leave them in the little drawer with the dishcloths or the, you know what I mean. So itty bitty washcloths. So these are all just seed stitch. This is also the Hobby Lobby cotton. This is the Carousel Ombre. <laughs> I just like to say Ombre. Um, but so yay. Just made them a quarter as big. The big one you cast on 40, this one you cast on 20. Okay. So I've got five of those. There's a bunch left in the skein. Oh, that was one thing I was going to show you. Darn it. There's a bunch left in the skein, but then we discovered this whole weaving thing. This friendship bracelet weaving thing, which we've weave. Well, it's weaving. I meant we have as in the contraction of we have. Um, we've gotten interested in, we've got cut a little circle out of cardboard and you make slots in it and then you make a little hole in the middle and you can weave a little ropey friendshipy bracelet and I meant to bring one over and of course I neglected to do so. Um, but so I saved some of the yarn for her because she really got into that. I was all like, oh, this is a nice quiet activity and it's uber, uber, uber portable. You can like take it in the car and all that good stuff. So I've been saving some of that for that. She's enjoying it, and I'm enjoying it, because she's doing it and leaving me alone for three seconds at a time. Yay. Um, God, I'm such a bad mom. Whatever. Okay, then the saga continues with the cotton yarn. This is the Big Girl Dish Scrubby by Lori Laliberte. Washcloths all knit on US fives. Yes. That lion thing. Doesn't matter. Two strands of light sport heavy fingering knit together on something and then put in the washing machine. Doesn't matter. Anywho, 
This is crocheted. Guess what? Hook a please. I'm a bad, bad girl with a quarter. I cannot hook to save my life. Look at this. Wait, wait. I keep adding. The other one, I made another one too, but I'm using it right now. So it's wet and over there. But it's like this. It's like some weird shape that I don't know the name of. It's really bad. I keep adding you uh, free pattern. Okay, I can do it. You you like knit, you crochet in a circle. So the round starts over here. Every time I get here, evidently I'm adding stitches because it just keeps. <sighs> so then you're like, well, why did you crochet it, dummy? And I'm all like, because this is why. Because all the other dish rat. Uh, scrubby things that I have ever done. I have knit. I don't like them. I will confess I'm addicted to those scrubby sponges. I don't like to admit that because quite frankly they're terrible for the environment. I have switched over to the brown ones which are made with like walnut fiber or something and like agave leaves or something. I don't even know what they're made of. Yucca? Ooh, I think maybe yucca. Anywho, they're totally made of natural plant fibers and they will decompose in the earth, which I believe because quite frankly, they tend to decompose in my sink. Now, that does not mean I have gross standing water in my sink. It just means that they don't last very long and they're like a dollar twenty a piece. They are about the same price as the green and yellow sponges, which I do appreciate, but they don't seem to last as long. But I can't keep throwing those green and yellow sponges away. I'm a terrible human being. I'm racking up very bad earth karma and I must stop. Oh, it's just out. But I really like the scrubby ones. They're very effective. I don't have a dishwasher. If I don't do the dishes immediately, that's very helpful and quite frankly I don't. I rarely do the dishes immediately. I'm a bad person. Judge. I don't care. But anywho, if you don't do them immediately, it gets all crusty and you... Anyway... So the reason the crochet, back to the beginning of that, the reason I've decided to crochet them is because, you know, crochet is much less elastic than knitting, which is what I want, because as soon as you get the other ones wet, they just kind of like, no matter how, I'll knit them on like size ones, like worsted weight, which is painful. Like really, you can only knit them so tight before it's just, it's too much of a pain. Um, So I'll knit them very tight, but they still stretch out. So these I am actually mildly satisfied with. I say mildly because I own the smallest hook I had that was not like a tiny thread crochet hook was an F. And I think really if I did them in a D, it would be acceptable. Because it still gets a little stretchy outy, but it's not nearly as bad as the knit ones. And I can deal with it. But I definitely need a smaller hook because these are a little too loose still. But anyway, it's quite an easy little pattern. It's kind of fun to do. It's teensy tiny, speedy deedy, but it, I am not a very good crocheter. I have to count all the rows where I had stitches. Fail. Oh well. I guess there are worse things in life to fail at than hooking. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Last. Yes, last finished object. My loop. Bullseye bump in violets or blue. Not that it matters because you can't get one, yo. One of a kind. Mm. It is, it turned out to be about 500 yards of, man, it really kind of floofed when I washed and thwacked it, um, of about a sport weight. It's a little thicker than I thought. I really kind of anticipated it being a fingering when I was working on it, but I'm still new. I'm not going to judge myself too harshly, even though I want to. So, um, I am satisfied. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it is what it is. Isn't that fun? She's brilliant. Look at this. I would never pick anything with these colors in it. She tricked me, and I am okay with it. I'm not upset about her tricking me at all. But, it's like there's even hot pink in there. What the heck? Anyway, very pleasant to spin. Of course, like I even need to say it. Very fun. <laughs> um, and I enjoyed it. I don't know what it's going to be, but it'll be something.
if not just a cinnamon bun of joy. But anyway, on to works in progress. Works in progress. Okay, I could show you that stupid pine, what's it called? Pine forest baby blanket again. I did work on it. I almost got another skein of it done. I'm not sure. It looks exactly the same as it did. I mean, it's this much bigger, but you can figure, extrapolate people. I'm sure you're sick of seeing it. <laughs> you're like, really, we, we are totally okay with you not showing us that dang thing again. Um, Yet another one that you've seen enough to be sick of. But I'll show it to you because I'm kind of still proud of it. Shut up. This is my sweater. It's done, except for, well, obviously, the finishing. But I have, I steeped it. I got a sleeve done. And I did the ribbing around the neck and the ribbing around one side. So... All the money people. If it's totally cute, shut up. It totally does look cute. Yay! Um, so I still have to do this side of the button, the band with the actual buttonholes in it, which I could have totally finished, but I just didn't want to sit down and try to figure out where the buttons need to go. Isn't that terrible? I'm like, I don't want to think even an ounce about what I'm doing, people. <laughs> but it's true. So I just need to lay it out and put the buttons on it and figure out the spacing and then do the other buttonhole band, which will be sliggity split. But it just takes a little bit of brain power, which I don't always have available to my usage. Um, so yeah. So all I have to do is do that buttonhole band, stitch down the facings from the sticking, and weave it in, and then I'm done. Shut, shut, shut. And then I can insert another sweater. I think I'm totally going to make the good ale. You should look it up. I don't know who it is by because I don't have it right here. But Knit Psycho made one. She's one of the viewers, the people in our group. Hello, Amanda. Wait, maybe it's just Amanda. Ooh, I'm sorry. Knit Psycho. Um, she made one. Looks very cute on her. I think I'm gonna make it next. I have some blue of that that Knit Picks Cotland that I made the orange blanket with. I have some blue. I think I might do it. It's DK in the pattern of sport. Whatever. I saw some other people that did it in DK and it looked just lovely. And cotton is kind of, it has no halo, so you know this is DK, it's kind of sport. Whatever, you figure it out. I'll figure it out. We'll see. I'm still excited to shut up. Right. Um, work in progress, again, that you've seen. Oh my god, these socks. My husband's socks. Oh, I don't have the other one there. I only have the one I'm working on. Okay, so one sock is finished. I showed you that. And now this one is almost finished. <laughs> so I'm almost done. I'm so excited. I am going to knit the most bright, obnoxious sock in the world next. Oh, I'm so sick of uh, I'm so sick of looking at this. It's uh Peyton's Croy in the camouflage, the Croy FX. Something camouflage. I have a ball right here. I could just look at it, and not be obnoxious. Camo colors. That's what it is. Croy socks. Um so, I mean it's totally pleasant to knit with. It's not that. I enjoyed knitting with that yarn quite a bit. It's very sturdy. But dang it. It's a lot of two by two ribbon people. No ribbing in the next sock. I'm just flinging the needles around. It's crazy. Um, last work in progress. I know, right? Can I shut my mouth? Last work in progress. Also for the Nerd Wars. Sorry, that's obnoxious. Um, also for the Nerd Wars, one of the things is a historical challenge or whatever. So I've had this pattern in my. I actually have had it in my pattern library for like, I'm going to say 18 months to two years <laughs> because I really wanted to knit it. It's a cloach. I think that's how you say it. It's one of those cute little clever hats that look like they're from the flappery people. And I've wanted to knit it, but I will tell you, it looks, there it is right there, Matilda and Tilly. And it is by MK Carroll. It is a pay pattern. Um, but it's one of those patterns where when you look at the projects, you're like, because they seem to have wildly varying rates of success. <laughs> like, 
Ooh, you're kind of afraid to risk it. And so I just kind of kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And also it's not like a super, it's not hard at all, but it's a little fiddly. Um, so I've just been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And finally, so this I will say about the Nerd Wars, look at it. It's totally challenging me to do something I've been wanting to do, but I've just putting it off and needed a reason to push my butt out there. So I did it. Well, I didn't do it. I'm doing it. So the pattern, I can tell you this because I, I'm going to, because if I show it to you, you're going to know. It's knit in two pattern, two patterns. It's knit in two pieces. You knit the crown of the hat. So I am using that um, Cormo hand spun that I dyed myself roving. And then you knit the brim in the bias, and I won't tell you how to do it, but again, you could tell that by looking at the pattern. You knit the brim in the bias and sew it on. Now you can see why I was in my queue for two years. Eek! Um, but it is so cute. And when they're when the pattern worked out for people, it really worked out. It looks super cute. So I have no idea if this will be flattering on me at all, but we're gonna try. This is probably not the most ideal yarn for it because it's a little overspun. Maybe a little more than a little overspun. <laughs> okay, it's a lot of overspun. Shut up. Um. So it's a little bit less, some of the ones that looked really cute were a little bit halo-y. This one's not very halo-y, but whatever, it is what it is. The pattern is very well written. I don't, again, I have no idea how it's going to turn out, but she gives you, for one thing, the pattern is actually four patterns because there's two different brim shapes and there's two different finishings for the two different brim shapes. And she's, she's presented in a very clear and concise way, which is very easy to understand. Um, and she gives you hints throughout the whole pattern for customizing the fit. So it's not just a flat, you know, knit 20 rows, then be done. It's, you know, hold it to this place and see if it fits to here. And if it does, then yeah, you should be okay. Um, so it, a theoretically short work. I'm nervous though. Well, fit somebody's head, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, I think that's totally all. <laughs> Taking notes. Yes. So, I'm so sorry. Can't help it. Um, I hope you all have a lovely week. I will have a lovely week. There's been positive feedback about perhaps doing a special episode about some sort of amalgamation of um, how I choose sweater patterns or garment patterns. You guys are so cute. I have like three garments that I've, I don't even think you've seen three garments. You've only seen one of them a person. I could be totally lying to y'all. But anyway, <laughs> I'll try to actually take photos of myself in some garments and update my Ravelry page. You know, maybe. I would be good if I could do that. It's so hard to take pictures of yourself and quite frankly, I love my husband. He has no idea what a flattering photograph is. <laughs> He's about yay big. Never been concerned about a flattering photograph in his life. Has no concept of what that should be. He's all like, oh, every picture he takes of me is like the super, like full body. I'm like, no, <laughs> get it. tight, tight. He does not get it. Um, so I really just, I'm going to have to just figure it out. I'm just going to have to make him take 5,000 pictures and I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to bribe him into that, but I will try my best. And then I will get together something about like how I choose garment patterns, what I look for, for my specific person. And then maybe if I can, I, I'm going to try to wrangle something coherent. You're like, yeah, no, <laughs> I'm going to try. Can we try to make it slightly more professional? That's what it'll be. <laughs> everyday bonus is crazy. Um, everyday bonuses. Everyday episodes crazy. Bonus episodes, not full and informed. Um, so I will try to get that together sometime next full week and get that out to you. Um, so yeah, that's coming up. I uh, hope you all have a lovely, super fabulous week filled with knit, good knitting ninja e goodness. And yeah, I look forward to hearing from you. Your iTunes reviews are always appreciated, as are your donations. Just saying. 
you know who you are. See you next week. Bye.